Well, I think the, the key points I want to make are that I didn't wait till K to 12. Um, I was very fortunate to have really good early childhood development for uh, two main reasons. Um, one is that uh, I went to a really good YMCA daycare at Mount Pleasant and we did, we were thought we were just playing, but we were doing early childhood development. And so when I arrived at kindergarten, I was already ready to, you know, ready to go with some basic competencies. And so, um, so I think that's something we need to, to look at is how can we make sure kids are better prepared for even for kindergarten. And so, you know, with my kids, we're focused a lot on early childhood development because that brain development between two and six is critical. And I, in retrospect, I was fortunate uh, to get this. And one of the reasons why is because um, some of you may have had Marg Iveson uh, as a teacher. She's been a professor at the U of A in education for almost 30 years now. She's retiring. She was a high school English teacher before she got her PhD. And so, um, so this was important for her. And she's been studying me my whole life. <laughs> so. Uh, if you've had her as a teacher, you've heard her talk about me at great length. She's very proud of me, uh, which is very sweet. But she, you know, she knew how important this kind of interaction was. She, they nurtured uh, uh, creativity around uh, the dinner table. I knew what pedagogy was when I was going into kindergarten. I didn't, couldn't really explain it, but it was a word I'd heard, and it was something we talked about. So, so I was primed well. And then uh, something really interesting happened in 1984. Remember what Canada was like in 1984. This was when I entered kindergarten. And think about the strife in the country. Uh, Pierre Trudeau was, was the prime minister still uh, on the way out. Uh, this was right after national energy policy. Multicultural policy was very controversial. And somehow my parents were the kind of people who said, we should put Don in French immersion. So think about how strange a decision that would be in Alberta in 1984 to put your kids in French immersion. So um, they valued and thought that the second language learning would be good for me, and I think it was. But something else happened that was really interesting um, by implication, which is that I was in a class full of kids whose parents were also the kind of people who thought it would be kind of fun to put their kids in French immersion in 1984. And so this was actually a pretty interesting group of kids and, um, and they've gone on actually to do some pretty extraordinary work in health, in the arts, uh, in academics. And I'm still in touch with a lot of these kids. It was really a tightly knit group of kids that came through McKernan uh, with me, which is where my son is going to start kindergarten uh, next Tuesday, taking French, just like his old man. And um, so, so I was very fortunate once I, once I got there to have uh, some, some wonderful teachers uh, and they, you know, nurtured my curiosity, of course, and um, all the way through to, to high school where, again, I, I was, I don't know if I was just lucky to have phenomenal teachers or I think that teachers are phenomenal people because of what they choose to do and the way they, they try to shape a generation. Uh, and and uh, you, know, you have to be a kind of a patient person and a curious person and a very caring person, I think, to be a teacher. And I'm biased because I have this idea of my mom as like the prototypical, the, you know, the platonic ideal of the teacher, right? And, uh, and so she's tried to replicate herself and her values out there as a professor for 30 years. And so I like to imagine there's all these people out there who care about uh, children's development and their success uh, and nurturing their curiosity. And she was instrumental in a lot of the curriculum development for, um, for uh, English uh, language arts that's about um, discovery and about uh, creativity and about multimodal learning and all of these different things. And so I grew up around this stuff. And, uh, and so it's been interesting for me, and it's made me very conscientious as a parent. But, um, but to know that there are all these people out there who she's helped to shape is, is uh, you know, inspires me. Um, and then just one other thought here before I expire the time is um, one of the reasons why my, my wife and I chose to stay in Edmonton when most of our friends, especially some of these successful friends of mine who I grew up with, didn't feel like Edmonton was a place where they could be successful, was because when we started thinking about having a family, one of the most important decisions for us is being able to send our kids to the best public schools in the world, which are right here. And that's because of you folks and the, a lot of great decisions that have built that system. And yes, it could be better. Yes, it could be better capitalized. It should be, because it's our best competitive advantage for the long term to attract people here and to build an economy and a citizenry of tomorrow that can compete.